Today we're going to discuss toxic shame. Something that I believe is probably one of the greatest barriers to personal development and self-awareness and also one of the least talked about subjects I'm referring to as toxic shame. And what I mean by that is I can't say many of us. I can only go from my own experience. So I will share with you that I had an experience that I was so ashamed of that I carried with me for years that it really negatively impacted my relationships with my family, with friends, um, with women that I was interested in. It was toxic. It was killing me in many ways. It was, it was a big part of my drinking because the thing that had happened, the thing I was carrying the shame for, I perceived myself as a monster. I perceived myself as everything evil that I had been brought up to perceive as good and evil. I need to share that uh, telling this next part of the story is a bit scary for me right now. I've talked about it to people I trust. I have actually written about it. But to do it in front of a camera is a, uh, a whole other level. So for me to face my fears and to step past my comfort zone, I need to do this. So what I'm going to talk about, I also want to pre-frame a little bit because I, I'm careful in sharing this. The experience that I had was of being molested by a female member of the family, an aunt. And I, I always have to back off of that word molested because I want to respect people who have been sexually abused um, because the experiences that they've had have been much more physically violent and I don't want to lessen their experience in any way when I say that a, a female aunt had molested me. But the emotional and mental uh, repercussions of it, I believe, were almost as intense. Because the way things unfolded, I ended up feeling like I was the aggressor and I was the monster in the whole thing. To make that make a little bit of sense, my earliest memories of what had happened was after I had lost my leg. My aunt would come to babysit me um, so I wasn't left alone. And it started off innocently with just kind of weird comments that were sexually oriented, progressed to playing games of strict poker with her, uh, progressed to her showing me my uncle's magazines that the one that stuck out in my mind was a magazine of tons of different sexual positions. Then it progressed to inappropriate touching is the most I can say right now. And then there came a point, now this went on for probably about three years, where now being an 11 year old and having become so familiar with her in the nude and, and being touched, I was returning the touching and she freaked out. I started bawling, started screaming at me, telling me I had crossed these lines and calling me names that made no sense because up until that point, this was a two-way street and a game. And I can remember running out of her house feeling really dirty, feeling like I must have been 
the grossest, most perverted, disgusting person on the planet. And feeling like a monster because this person who had told me that they loved me so much and all those things was now screaming at me for what I'd just done. That affected me greatly for the next maybe 20 years. And that's why I call it toxic shame. It affected everything. It affected my relationships with my mother because God, what would happen if she found out what had happened between me and my aunt and how I had done this terrible thing? It affected my relationships with the rest of my family. I, I had to walk around with this, this secret. It affected my relationship with myself. I hated myself because how could I have done something so bad? I must be, I must be the devil incarnate based on my childhood religion. It affected my relationships with every woman I met because I couldn't have an intimate relationship with the women that I would date. I would have a sexual relationship, but I could not have an intimate relationship because if they really knew my secret, how could they love me? How could they care about me? I carried that shame. I carried that guilt, I carried that identity that I was a monster. Like I said, for about 20 years. And I would still be carrying it to this day if it wouldn't have been for two things happening. One was I had a daughter. And that kicked up some fears because if I was that much of a monster with my aunt, was my daughter going to be safe around me? The second thing that kicked up was my mother was allowing my daughter to spend time alone with that aunt. And that scared the living daylights out of me. And I needed to tell my mother that my daughter was not allowed to be alone with that woman. But how could I tell that to my mother that her sister was not allowed to be around her granddaughter? That led me to having to talk about this toxic shame that I carried for years. Talk about a confusing, confusing point. I was the monster, but I needed to talk to somebody to protect my daughter from this other person. One of the things about toxic shame is that I don't believe people ever do talk to someone else about it. So we have this distorted perception that makes no sense. I had the blessing of having one person that I could trust to open up to about the story of what happened. And I told it from the point of me being the monster, of me being this aggressor, of me being this, this, this deviant. And the person pointed out to me a different perception. They said, Will, how many eight-year-olds do you know who have the type of knowledge of sex that would allow you to be the dominant, the aggressor in this situation. And with all the things that I had shared with them in that two hour conversation, I was like, none. <clears throat> By having this conversation, it was the first time in 20 years that I actually took off that hat, that mask, that whatever, of me being the evil one. And I looked at it from the perspective of, no, I was the victim in this. 